I want to begin with a piece of music from the Jewish artist Shoshana Jedwab. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. And your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. And your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. I've been thinking a lot about that sequence of finger games and rhymes that begins with, here is the church, here is the steeple. So I take my hands and hold the palms together and interlace the fingers above and say, here is the church, here is the steeple. And we open the fingers and where are all the people? The next part of that rhyme is with the fingers tucked in and the hands together. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. We open the doors and there are all the people. What I love about this rhyme is part that, that all the people being in the church, that this was wonderful. It's not just good, it's fantastic. Now, a couple of months ago, the church was full. Here, here are all the people. But now, now it is. Here is the church, here is the steeple. We open the doors. And where are all the people? All the time. The church is empty. It is such an honor and a privilege to be your candidate for ministry. To imagine that I will go to you and we will be each other's people. You and I have been seeking for what comes next in our respective paths. And after all of the effort and study and reflection and writing and conversations and websites, here we are on the first Sunday of candidating. But this moment, this moment of how we are meeting with me recording the service and you at home this is not how it was supposed to be. We, we should be sharing coffee and potluck while getting to know each other and talking about a future of ministry. We should be asking questions and telling stories and revealing dreams and learning each other's language in person. But due to the precautions we must take to take care of each other, we are finding solutions to the need to continue with our lives and with the search while encountering each other over screens and videos. And while Zoom is useful, it has its limits. Meeting as we have been for the past week and then meeting further into the next week takes so much more time and energy. And the leaders have been diligently working to find a way to make this candidating happen and to be successful in the process right up through next Sunday's congregational meeting and the vote. With that in mind, I must at this point say thank you. I need to thank the Ministerial Search Committee who told your story and introduced me to 
this beautiful congregation and to Peoria. Thank you to all of the leaders who are making it possible to create this time together and discover each other. Thank you to the staff and the volunteers and especially also the parents who are showing up to meetings while everyone is in the house. Thank you to Rosa for the beautiful music for today and thank you to Austin for the technical magic that makes this possible. Thank you. And it seems that the first challenge we get to face as minister and congregation is where are all the people? We get to figure out what does it mean when the congregation, when the congregation is not safe to physically gather in the space that has been a source of comfort and identity for so long. What does it mean? What is the church without the building? Now, on the very first level of all of this, it is personal. You're staying home as certainly as an act of civic duty, but also as an act of love. This is consistent with our theology. How can we be of service? In this case, it is to stay away. And at the same time, this is such an intense displacement. I've heard many people say in the course of the last few weeks, I knew I was an introvert, but I had no idea how much I needed people. The loss of in-person community is profound, as is the loss of work for so many of us, the loss of school, of being able to take care of our lives. The cost is incalculable. And then we also fear for our family and our friends and our neighbors, as well as ourselves. On the larger scale, this disruption in our society reveals systems of oppression that make it so much more difficult for those in marginalized communities. People are dying because of these systems. People are dying because of long histories of discrimination and segregation and bias and the impact on access to health care and income and so much more. We are faced with amazing questions about community and purpose and message as well as relationship and safety. So what is the church without the building? I'll tell you, we have started to figure this out in the stories that we're sharing this week. We have been talking about what brought you here, what made you stay in the congregation, and what is your ministry? In the past week, we've been talking about what is important at church. And I offered up some of my own stories in that. Um, and as much as I grew up in a Unitarian Universalist congregation, it was one that was all flat roof. and not churchy. I mean, it's not churchy, but it was the church. It is the church. And I return and preach after Christmas nearly every year. It still is my church. Now, as a child, I really didn't care much about how the building looked, how the place looked. What I cared about was what it meant to be in the community. What I cared about was that the congregation cared about me.
mattered, that what we talked about and engaged with is what we all needed to bring out into the world. That the spirit of welcome and inclusion that we try to practice, that should go out into the world. That we should have faith in the power of love. That we are also part of something so much larger than ourselves. All of this is also part of the congregation, of the church. I think also that our Unitarian Universalist theology helps us respond in figuring out where we are. Now, I grew up in what was historically a Universalist congregation, but it is thanks to one of the past ministers from Peoria that I found Universalism for myself. So the Reverend Clinton Lee Scott, one of ministers, created this collection of Unitarian Universalist biographies called These Live Tomorrow. And I had to read about Hosea Ballou for my coming of age class. And I will tell you that I put it off as long as I possibly could. I was 12, 14. I was in no rush. But finally, I did. And I read it and discovered both Baloo and Universalism. Now, from way back in the 1800s, Hosea Baloo tells us that love is stronger than anything. And he also tells us that our question should be how to live life well, how to engage this life in this moment rather than fear death. That we should be embracing how we can be compassionate and justice seeking people here and now with each other. It happened that that message from Baloo meshed well with much of the humanism that was in the congregation where I grew up as well. Now, make no mistake, there are deep challenges from the religious pain carried by many members in the church. But what was also true was this deeper desire to embrace, to include, and to work out how to function as this imperfect human community, along with being amazed by the wonders of world religion, the wonders of science and nature with everything that are the sources around us. As I mentioned in one conversation uh, this week, members of the congregation included some of the faculty from the local uh, engineering college, Worcester Polytech. And I would see the orders of service after uh, they had been around on occasion and that they had scribbled these equations. Could have been engineering, could have been math, could have been physics. But to me, on these orders of service, they looked like these mandalas and meditations of reflection. But what I learned in that congregation was a profound sense of deep love, a passion of new truth, and a willingness to learn more about the world and to be a good steward of it. 20th century Unitarian Universalist theologian James Luther Adams tells us that we locate ourselves in the cosmos by constantly reconnecting with the intimate, with our lateral relationships, and with the ultimate, that which is larger than ourselves, that which represents our transcendent values, our connection with everything around us, with the universe and all that is. And we engage with those relationships with congregation and covenant and back and forth and back and forth. In our location as liberal religionists, we gather by choice, we freely assemble together. 
We recognize, we name and recognize the values shared among us. And we make manifest what we value through a combination of innovation, connection, reflection, and evaluation. We fulfill our call to give further form for, to our beliefs. As Adams reminds us that there is no immaculate conception of virtue. You have to do something with what you say you believe. And we give further form to that call to manifestation when we find ways to serve in the world. Then, in doing so, we return to each other in small groups and in worship, in children and youth education programs, and refresh that location all over again. For this moment, in the here and now, I can't tell you when we will be together in person. I just don't know. With the extension of the stay-at-home order, you and I will need to be really creative about how we close out this church year and look forward to beginning the new. I will tell you I have been finding church all week. Time and again, what matters in our conversations. That is revealing church. The relationships and stewardship and singing and the range of beliefs under one faith, the desire to make Peoria a better place to live, and so much more. I know there will be more to find this week, and I would love to be part of discovering even more in the years to come. Where is the church? We are the church, and the church will find a way. Where you go, I will go, whether it is in Zoom or in email or on Facebook or on the phone. We have a theology that is open to new truths and new possibilities, and that Unitarian Universalism is not defined by any one location or place or time. We get to carry this with us wherever we may go. From the hymn, My Life Flows On, it speaks of how no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. That rock is the love that prevails in heaven and earth. And the hymn goes on to say, what though the tempest round me close, and I will say that even when the tempest is a quiet one, Still love prevails in heaven and earth. This quiet storm, this virus in our lives that has displaced the people, all the people, does not replace the heart. How can I keep from singing? How can we keep from singing? I will sing with you. Will you sing with me? How about that we sing together? <laughs>